Hey everybody, welcome to Board Game Heaven. My name is Raymond and in this video I'm going to talk about a game called Jungle Tribe by Bob Montal, published by Cloak Games, which will be kickstarted in January 2021. And this is a game of hand management. It's a card game, it has some dice rolling and in it everybody is a member of a tribe whose eldest has recently passed away and they're looking for a new tribe leader. And in order to do that, the tribe members have to complete three quests and the person to do that with the most points at the end of the game wins the game and becomes the new tribe leader. So let's quickly open up the box. I'll show you the components you get. This is still a prototype, but you'll get an idea of what you get in the box. I'll set up the game and teach you the rules and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, so Jungle Tribe by Bob Mantel, published by Cloak Games. This is a prototype, but it's pretty well produced. It's, uh, I think, close to the final uh, thing. So the cover of the box is pretty nice. has a uh, green cover with the Jungle Tribe logo and uh, the different characters that you might find on some of the cards. And on the back, there is uh, a small explanation of what the game is about and what you do in the game. So uh, that's all on here. It's a game for two to four players, which is about 10 minutes per person for ages eight and up. All right, so let's open up the box. So inside the box, you will get a rule book, the rules of play, which is just a small rule book. It's not a very difficult game with the objective, the contents, how to set up the game and it explains the two phases in the game where you pick your quests first until everybody has three quests and you roll some dice to uh, get those quests and then phase two you start playing cards and managing your hands to try and complete those cards uh, those quests so this is uh, how to play a card what they do the general rules and when the game ends and how you score with an example and that's basically it here you get some special card details and there's a mini expansion as well with these failure cards uh, we call them curses because you play, basically play them on somebody else's uh, in somebody else's uh, hand you play them on your turn to uh, subtract points from those players end scores and there's a, another mini expansion. I believe these are actually stretch goals in the uh, Kickstarter, but correct me if I'm wrong, uh, which have two special cards, which I will explain in a bit. So that's basically all there is to it. And inside the game, I'm turning around, so it's kind of messed up, but you get uh, a very basic insert. Uh, this one's white. I believe the final edition will actually have printed jungle designs on it. It has a uh, tray for the big and chunky dice. So you get one special white die, which is very nice. It's, uh, it has printed sides, but they look very clear and very nice. It has two sides with these symbols on it, which, which can pick one of the three results. Uh, four, actually. Uh, three. Three. <laughs> and this is a reroll, and you can reroll this or any other uh, number of dice. You have a um, thief that can steal a quest from somebody else and one that can send a quest back to the table from somebody's uh, selection of quest cards. So I'll explain that when the rules uh, are explained. And you have four of these chunky big wooden dice with the three uh, challenges, basically the experience symbols on it uh, twice. So that's those. And then you've got your hard cardboard uh, quest tiles and there's several for each type uh, of quests that there are in the game uh, so you have these which are wisdom this is a guy with the scroll and you have quests level one level two level three and one level five and they have different icons on them so i'll explain what that does in a bit and of course the higher the level the more of those icons which is basically the quest you take that there are on those tiles and there's uh, three types so this is the uh, strength quests and there's several of those and you have the uh, I think this is religion 
uh, with the amulet and has several of those as well. All right, so you have those and then you've got your uh, cards. Simple, these, these, these cards, these jungle cards. There's all kinds of different ones. There's these orange ones that you can play. There's the purple ones that are the failure cards. There's the blue ones that are your, uh, your challenges, your experience that you gain. And there is the jungle cards with uh, this symbol. This is constantly difficult, different. There are six different types, I believe. And they have different parts of the jungle that you can travel through. And there's a whole stack of those. As you can see, there's plenty of them. And there are a couple of uh, rules reference cards as well. There's four of them, one for each player, which explains your turn reference. So um, this is the uh, second phase of the game where you uh, draw a card from the market or the deck. Uh, then you play either a jungle card or a experience card, or if you add the purple failure card, you can play one of those as well. And then any amount of these uh, yellow cards, orange cards, and then you discard on the market, basically. You put them face up on the market, and then you draw back up to three if you've discarded more from your hand. And on the other side, it tells you what these different cards are. All right, but I'll explain more about that. But as you can see, the rules are pretty simple. There's more of these cards. These are special cards that are basically a, a mini expansion or, or stretch goals. There's a boomerang card four times. And there's a jungle card that is basically uh, every type of jungle, so it can be played for anything. Okay, let's set up the game and explain the rules. To set up a game of Jungle Tribe, you take all of these quest tiles and you sort them by number and type. So the, these are the uh, strength challenges, the strength quests, the wisdom quests, and the religion quests. And you can tell them apart by the amulet, the scroll, and the spears, and of course the different uh, characters that are drawn on them. And you take the level one uh, tiles and you flip them over the level two together and the level three together with uh, a random card on top and the level five that's just one you leave them face down on the table and in a two-player game you just use one of each level so that means just one of these randomly on the table and the other one is discarded back into the game box then you take all of the cards and give that a good shuffle, shuffle them together, and then deal each player three cards. So in a three player game, you simply hand each player three cards at the start of the game. And then you take the rest of these cards, put them in the middle of the table with an easy reach and take three cards and put them face down for now next to the drawing pile. And that will be the market. Keep all the dice nearby and now you're ready to play. The goal of the game is to try and complete three quests and of course get as many victory points as you can while doing so because the player with the most victory points at the end of the game wins the game and becomes the new leader of this jungle tribe. But before you can start on your quests, you need to select them from the ones that are on the table. And this is what you do in the first phase of the game. The game has two phases and it starts with phase one, collecting your quests. So in order to do that, you're going to roll some dice. Every quest has a number of victory points, which is the number of points in the top left, which is the level of the quest, the level of difficulty. And if you complete a quest, you double that amount of points. So you can get either one, two, three, or five, or even two, four, six, or 10 points from completing a quest. The symbols on these quest cards represent the cards you need to complete those quests. There are these jungle symbols, which are on the jungle cards, and they have corresponding icons. And there are these 
challenge or these experience icons and of course every type has its own kind of icon so the religion ones require these amulets to be fulfilled the uh, wisdom ones have these scrolls and the strength have those uh, these spears playing jungle cards is mandatory but these experience cards are not mandatory you can choose to play them or skip them however these experience cards add extra points to a quest. Quests must also always be fulfilled from left to right in the order of the icons depicted on this card. So determine who gets to go first, then you take your die and that player rolls those dice. And now you may choose to either pick a quest that has an equal or less number of symbols on your dice. So in this case, I rolled two scrolls, a spear and an amulet. So I could either choose a level one strength quest, a level one religion quest, or a level one or two uh, wisdom quest. Or I can choose to use the action of the special die. And I'll explain those faces. So this face means you get to re-roll any number of dice, including this one. So in this case here, if I wanted to have a higher level wisdom quest, I already have to, I could say, well, I'm gonna take these two and the white die and just re-roll all of them in hopes of getting better results. And in this case, I rolled this face, which is also a special face. And that means you get to pick one of these three symbols to add to your results. So now I have an extra scroll. So that means I have three scroll symbols. I could also choose to go for a level two strength or a level two religion. But in this case, I might prefer a level three wisdom. So I take the top card from that pile and add it to my side of the table. Another special result is the catapult. And this card destroys a quest from another player or yourself. And that quest must be returned to the quest decks on the table and become available again to all players, except for a level five quest. A level five quest cannot be destroyed and players who already have three quests are protected from this result. And then finally, there's the thief, which allows you to steal a quest from another player of your choice. And you can also steal a level five quest. But if a player already has three quests, they are protected from this result. So players keep on doing this in clockwise order until each player has three quests. And then you continue to phase two. Every player must always perform these actions. So roll the dice and then either pick a quest or perform a special action. And if you cannot do either of those actions, then you don't do anything and your turn ends, but you will get a next a turn uh, when it's your turn again. And if one of the players already has three quests, they are simply skipped until everyone does have three quests. Now picking your quest is pretty important and you want to try to avoid picking quests that have duplicate symbols, because if you have three quests that all have, for example, the palm tree or, or the bridge, then you're gonna need that card for all of your quests. So a variation is important here. So once all the players have their three tiles, so let's say uh, I've got one of these, I've got one of these, and maybe I have this one as well for, for this player, I'll put them here, for example, and this player has that one, that one, maybe they have a managed to get a level five and the other player has this one, this one, and this one. At that point, you can just take all of these remaining quest tiles and get them off of the table because now the uh, main game begins the phase two. And that means that you're gonna be drawing cards and playing cards. So I'll just put these here. Then you can flip over these three cards. And the first thing you're going to do is uh, draw a card. So you've got your three cards on your hand. And then what you do is you either draw one card from these three, these stacks, or you take the top card from the draw pile. 
So I'll check my cards here, my quests, and see which cards I need. These cards both need a bridge to start with, and this card also has a bridge, so this wasn't chosen too carefully. I've got two of these and two of these, so I might have better swapped something around. But anyway, uh, I all can also use a waterfall, and next I've got some challenges to do. Now I've got a challenge card here, or an experience card, I've got two jungle cards, and one of them is a bridge, which I can use. And if I played here, then the next turn I could try and get that card onto that spot. And that's already two of the cards in this quest. But I need to roll dice for this. I'll explain that in a bit. So I check my hand and see what I can do. And if I can use any of these cards, I could pick that. Now, this is a very handy card to have because this card subtracts one symbol from the three I need here. Again, I'll explain that in a bit. So I might choose to take this, but if none of these are helpful to me, I can also draw the top card from here. So now I have four cards and I'm gonna see what I can do. So now I can try to fulfill one of my quests or at least part of it. Empty spots get uh, replaced at the start of the game only. Once there are multiple cards on this, uh, a stack won't uh, be empty that fast anymore. But if, it, if a stack is completely empty, you simply put one card down. So now I can play either a jungle card, an experience card, or if I'm playing with the mini expansion with these failure cards, if I had one of those in my hand, I could also choose to play a failure card and I'll explain those in a bit as well. So what you do is then you take one of your cards and you slide them under your quest card. So for example, if I wanna start my quest here, then I've got the first symbol already played here. Then I can play as many of these special cards, these orange cards, as I want to. Now, in this case, I can't play it, uh, but you could play uh, any number of those cards. And then at the end of my turn, I can discard cards that I don't need right away. Now, I don't need a palm tree at all. And I'm gonna hold on to this one and this one because I'm gonna try and play these on my next turn. So I'm gonna discard this. Now, you can never discard the exact same card on top of another. That's not an issue here. But if I, for example, had this card in my hand, I could not place it here. I'd have to place it on one of the other stacks. But in this case, I can just place it anywhere. Now, I can see that this player is gonna need one of these but there's two, so I can only block one if I discard one card. If I discarded more, that could help as well, but these are pretty helpful cards. And the other player also has a totem, but uh, this is also a very handy card because that is a optional card that, you, that can get you more points, and this player has one, that player has one, so I'm gonna play this on top of that to prevent them from taking that because like I said you can take a card either from one of these three piles or here and then at the end of your turn when you're done you draw back up to three from the stack and I get another bridge which in my case is very convenient then the next player takes their turn looks at their hand and they've got two mountains and a minus two card and they can't use a mountain right away they can use it later on and they don't have a, a, a quest or a challenge card, one of these experience cards, and they only need it, uh, you know, when they're playing one of these. So right now with the cards on their hand, they couldn't play anything, but since they have a totem and a palm tree at the start of two of their quests, they could pick one of these. So they're probably gonna go ahead and take that one because there's only one of those, although that would, free up this card for the next player. So maybe they won't do, but they can also play one of their unwanted cards on top of that. There's two totems, so if that player takes a totem, this player doesn't need a totem, they could try and get the third one or the second one uh, on their next turn. So that might be their best option. They're taking the palm tree, then they're gonna play their cards. This one's gonna play a palm tree underneath uh, this quest here. And then there's nothing else to play and they're gonna discard this and this card, which might not be very helpful to them. Uh, oh, no, actually I'm gonna hold on to that one because of that one over there, yeah. And if the other player takes the first totem, then I can hopefully take the second one. 
So that's what they're going to do. And they're going to draw back up to three and they get another special card. Then it's the third player's turn. They look at their hand. They've got a totem, a palm tree and a minus one card. They're going to draw a card. So do I want to draw one of these? Let's see. We've got a totem. We've got a palm tree, which only is in a later turn. So might not be that useful right now. Can I use a mountain? Nope, not right away. Uh, and a totem I don't need because I have one. So I'm going to draw a card from the stack, which is also a mountain. But yeah, I, unfortunately I can't use it, but I do have uh, this totem card, which that player can play underneath this quest. So let's see. Are they going to discard something? Yes, they are going to discard these two cards. They are not helpful right away. I cannot play this on top of that, so I'll play this one here. And since I spotted that they need that card, I'm going to play this one on top of that. So that's basically in short a round. So let's explain all the different cards. I'll just put these to the side. So there are the basic jungle cards. There's the bridge, the waterfall, the river, the mountain, the totem, and the palm tree, the banana jungle. And those are the six different types of jungle that correspond with the icons on your quest. And you basically just pick one of those and put them underneath the quest card in the right order. And you can only play one per turn. And the other cards in the game are the experience cards, which are these blue cards. And there's three types again. One for each of the different kinds of quests. You have the uh, religion, wisdom and strength. And there's cards that have uh, two or three of these symbols on them. And when you're playing this, so for example, this player on their next turn, they held on to that card and one of these cards, which I'll explain as well. So they might want to play this, this wisdom, this scroll on this card because that is the next symbol on this quest. So what they do is they take that card, they play it. And what you want to do then is roll the dice. You, this card, this die is uh, not used during round two. So I might as well just put it aside. And then you take all of the dice and you roll them. Now, before you roll, you need to decide if you want to play one of these cards and they come in a minus one and a minus two version like this player has over here. And if I play them, I need one less result of what I'm ruling here. So this card has three scrolls on it. That means I need three scroll results, but I'm going to play this one as well. And that means minus one. So I take my dice, I roll them. And unfortunately, I only get one scroll and I need it. I still need it too. So that means this quest fails and I have to discard it back on to one of these stacks. So I might want to put it over there. And these special cards when used are discarded. So always make sure you have some room for a discard pile next to uh, this uh, drawing pile. I usually put it next to it. Well, let's just put it here. And those stay there uh, and are not reshuffled until the entire drawing deck is empty. When this is empty, you take all of the cards except the top ones. You leave the top three cards on the table. You take all the rest underneath and you take all the discarded cards. You shuffle those back together to form a new drawing pile. So if I had had this card instead when playing this, and then I only needed one success, one of those results, and then I could have placed that card underneath and then moved on. Now these are optional. These are not mandatory. So I could choose on my next turn to simply play the mountain, complete this quest. And then this one point would be doubled and I'd have two points for completing that quest. So at the end of their turn, that player draws back up to three. And that explains these uh, experience cards. There are optional failure cards as well in the game, which I suggest you just use in a regular game. They are a bit of a take that mechanism as well. And you play them instead of a jungle card or an experience card. And they basically subtract one point from an opponent's victory point. So what you do, for example, if I want to play this card, 
and I can choose one of the other players to play that card on and they simply get that card and it says you roll anything but in this case one scroll or one amulet or one spear to reduce an opponent's points by one. So what I do, I take all my dice and you roll them and if I roll anything but one scroll I'm successful and I basically I jinx or I curse the opponent and they have a failure point so that's minus one. So in this case I rolled three scrolls which is not one and even if I rolled zero scrolls that would also be a success. It would only fail if I rolled exactly one scroll. And after that is used you also place it on top of one of the other cards. I might want to put it there because that's a useful card. And then that's that. And then finally there are several of those uh, orange cards. Uh, we've already seen the minus one or the minus two that help you with completing uh, these experience challenges with the rolling of the dice. But there's also cards like these that give you extra victory points, plus two or plus three victory points. And they have a hand arrow here, this hand symbol, which means you don't really play these, you keep them in your hand until the end of the game and then you simply add them to your victory points. But it does mean that takes up one very valuable space in your hand and your hand limit is always three, except at start of the game when you draw a new card. So these are, while very valuable, uh, not very smart to hold in your hand from the start of the game. So this is usually something you start holding on to at the end of the game. Then there's three types of times two, and that means that these cards, so this is the strength card, for example, this doubles all of your strength uh, experience. So if you have uh, experience cards, the blue ones with uh, strength, if you have a strength quest, for example, and I completed this uh, challenge, and I'd have a strength with three symbols under it, uh, for example, and I also had this card at the end of my of, of the end of the game, then I wouldn't score three but six points. And in the case of a double one, so let's see, this was a three, and if I had this at the end of the game, then I'd have six points instead of three. This is basically the number of points this card gets you. And there's one in the game for each of the three types of quests. So these are pretty rare cards, but they're also very valuable. Then you have another uh, catapult or a slingshot, which was also on the white die and basically does the same instead of destroying a quest, this time it destroys a card on a quest. And it's always the last card in a row. So if I have multiple fulfilled cards on a quest, I destroy the last one and I put it back on any of the three decks in the game for other players to pick if they wanted it. And that's what that card does, and then it is discarded. There's the Thief card, which also does the same as on the white die. You basically steal something. And in this case, you steal a random card from a player's hand. So without looking, you just pluck a card from their hand. And that is quite painful if they just manage to get a card that they need on their next turn. And you just pluck it away. Or if they, in this case, play the card... Uh, such as a, an experience card and they used one of these cards for it and then you just put it back and that's all very much uh, take that kind of card. Then there's the uh, shovel and the shovel lets you dig up a card from one of the three open stacks. So you basically just play this card, you pick one of these without looking, you only see the top card and then you say well I'm gonna dig in this pile and then you're just gonna go through it and then when you find a card that you need you just pick that into your hand and that's that. This is the minus one and minus two card as we've seen that help you uh, reduce the number of dice results that you need to play one of those experience challenge cards. All right those are all the cards in the basic game. Then there are some I believe stretch goals uh, which is this uh, boomerang card which lets you immediately take back a discarded card so that's pretty handy and there's also the uh, the multi jungle <laughs> basically it is a card that directs you to any of the jungle cards you need this uh, signposts 
and you can play that in place of any type of jungle. So that's also a pretty nice card to add to the game. And that's basically all there is to it. So when the first player takes their turn again, uh, I can check if I want to... Um, you know, I only have the jungle cards here, so do I want to pick this card again or take one of those cards? I might as well try and get this and just try again even without these cards or hold on to it and play something else. I could also just play this underneath this uh, card here and then just discard the others. I might want to skip that and then play this, but I'm just gonna press my luck. There's a certain press your luck mechanism in here too. And by just discarding all of these and just keeping those and then drawing back up to three again, and then it's the next player's turn, etc., etc. When one of the players fulfills all three of their quests, either with or without these blue uh, challenges, then all the other players get one more turn and then the game ends. And then you simply start counting up your points. The first person to complete all three of their quests gets two extra victory points. After that, all other players get one extra turn to try and complete their quests. And if you manage to complete all three, you get one extra victory point and otherwise you get zero extra victory points. And scoring is as follows. So for each quest you get the number of points that's on uh, the card itself. So in this case, this is a quest that's worth two points. It's a level two quest. But if I completed it, so that is having played at least these three jungle cards and optionally this uh, experience card, then I get double that number of points. So that would mean in this case four points. And if I had uh, a spear card, so let's say I had uh, this card, for example, also on this track here, and then this one, and then the river, that would mean this card is complete, so it would be worth uh, four points, plus I have this challenge in there, which is three points, so that's seven points for this quest. And maybe I didn't complete this quest, but uh, had still worth uh, three points. And this quest would be worth one point if not completed. And again, two points if completed with possibly any of these. So this would be another three points. And then you simply add up all of those points and possibly any of the um, of these minus. If I have one of these cards, I subtract one point per uh, these type of cards from my total. And if I happen to have, so in this case, maybe I had I had the triple spears here. If I had this card in my hand at the end of the game, then I would double that. So another tactic to do at the end of the game when it's your last turn, somebody else completed their quests and I'm doing my final uh, hand. And then it's just obviously you try to play any card that you can still complete. But then at the end, if you don't have any cards that give you extra points, just discard everything and draw back up to three in the hopes of finding a card that might just give you some extra points. So if you happen to draw on your last turn this card, boom, you get an extra plus three points. So there's a bit of pressure lock in there as well. So if you have any of those cards on your hand at the end of the game, those might double the challenge card, these experience cards that you have, or just add to your total. And then you add everything up and the player with the most victory points wins the game. In case of a tie, the player with the most points earned from the blue experience cards wins, including points from any of these times two master cards. And if there is still a tie, then these players share the title of tribe leader. That's everything you need to know how to play. Let's go to my final thoughts. So my final thoughts on Jungle Tribe by Cloak Games. Well, let's start with the presentation of the game. The components are of a good quality. And again, this is just a prototype, but the cards are already of a nice uh, thickness and they have good uh, printed art on a very colorful. So that is all very clear. The quest tiles are of a thick cardboard and very sturdy indeed. So that is also very good and they are easy to read with the icons on them with the points that they get you at the end of the game as well. So that is all very well done and very clear. There's plenty of cards in the game. I love these 
chunky big wooden dice and the one plastic die that is the white one with the uh, printed sides on it and this one with the uh, heat transferred uh, icons on them as well nice and big nice and chunky so that's great and uh, otherwise the artwork is also a lot of fun it looks very cute very colorful and the color coding of the cards also makes it very clear to make out what is what you have your jungle cards which all of course have a little bit of jungle drawn on them and a clear big icon in the corner so it's clear what they are and then you have the blue cards that you can play or the purple cards that you can play and those are your your choices it's either one of those and then you have these orange yellow cards that you can play as many as you like if you can play them and of course there are several that you need to keep on your hand which have the hand uh, arrow here in the corner so all of that is very clear and very nicely illustrated so that is also a thumbs up for me so presentation is good art is good component quality is good uh, the theme is fun it i don't think it adds a whole lot to the gameplay but it does give you a nice flavor a nice background uh, as you're all you know these tribe members of this funny little uh, creatures that are scampering through the jungle trying to complete three quests and being the first one to do that and that gets you extra points as well so that is a lot of fun the theme does work uh, but like i said it doesn't really necessarily add to the gameplay itself so that brings me to the gameplay which is i think uh, a lot of fun it's very light it's very simple it's easy to learn it's easy to teach um, and basically what you're doing is hand management you've got your three cards you're drawing another card at the start of your turn and you're determining which card do i want to play can i play a jungle card on one of my quests can i play one of these challenges with the uh with the spears or the, the scrolls or the amulets and you roll the dice to hopefully uh, roll as many as you need and maybe you've got some of these uh, orange cards that subtract uh, a number of rolls so either one or two less of successes uh, that you roll on the dice which is very helpful and um and if you can't play either of those to advance in your quest you can also play a curse card on one of the other players subtracting a point from their end score so that's basically what you're trying to do you're trying to advance through your quests and if you can't do that you can always choose to play some take that cards and curse your opponents and then at the end of your turn when you're done playing with all your cards it's usually a matter of deciding if the cards that you still have on your hand are useful to you on your next turn. Otherwise, you're going to just have to hold on to them. They take up a space in your hand, so that's a decision you're going to have to make. And of course, having a plus two or a plus three card is quite a lot of points. But if that is in your hand very early in the game, it's going to take up that slot for a very long time. And it might just happen that somewhere along the game, somebody plays a thief card and steals get that card from your hand. So it's early on in the game, it's usually a good idea to just discard whatever you have left on your hand at the end of your turn if you can't use it immediately on your next turn and just draw three new cards and see what you get to cycle through that deck as fast as you can in the hopes of being able to advance your quests uh, a lot faster. And then at the later on in the game at the end when you see that someone is always close to finishing their third quest that's a good time to hold on to those uh, point multipliers the extra uh, victory points or these multipliers should you have that certain uh, challenge that icon in one of your quests and that is a lot of points extra so if you have you know like a three point challenge or a two point challenge that doubles that card so that's two or three points extra which is a big deal in this game and then of course the challenges are optional it's the jungle cards that are obligatory to play you need those to advance through your quest and if you come across one of these blue uh, challenge cards then you you know you get some extra points so that's basically what you're doing you're trying to go through that deck and try to advance your quests and you know along the way you might play some take that card so there is definitely some take that in here now you might decide on how much you want to play into that 
uh, depending on the people you play with uh, as well. Uh, on one hand, I like take that games. It's it's a lot of fun just stealing a card or even worse, destroying a card that's already in play after someone in just played one of these challenge cards, maybe even spending a card that uh, lets them subtract, you know, from the die roll and they barely manage to get it there and it finally advance and then the next turn you're just going to destroy that card that they worked so hard on. That's that's pretty brutal. But, you know, that is also part of the fun. But some people might not like that aspect of, of the game. They might not enjoy to take that aspect that much. But I did. And, of course, when you have a curse card, uh, usually what you do is, first of all, you try to focus on advancing your quest. So you're going to either play a jungle card or one of these blue challenge cards. But if you can't do that, if you don't have those on your hands, but you do have a a curse card, you might want to do that because there's nothing else of those three options you can do. You might just as well subtract a point from someone, see if that helps. Um, on the other hand, if your hand is not helpful to you, but might be helpful to somebody else, you don't want to discard those cards in order for them to just pick them up again and use them. So you might not choose to play that curse card and just discard your good hand that just isn't useful to you and put that curse card on top so they can't reach those cards unless, of course, they have the shovel and can dig through that deck. But that will cost them a card, a very useful card. So there's plenty of choices to make, but most of the time the choices are pretty obvious. This is definitely not a brain burner. It is a lighter filler game, but it was very enjoyable. Replayability is absolutely there. This is a game that plays in about 10 minutes per player. So with three players, you play in about half an hour. It's done pretty quickly and it's a race. So, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to get there as fast as you can. And since these uh, blue cards are optional, uh, people might skip them to get there faster and you know that adds a bit to the to the tension of who's going to get there first so after one game you might want to immediately play again to get a rematch so there is some replayability and there's plenty of different cards in here and there is even going to be some stretch goals which add new cards to the game uh, there's a mini expansion i believe the curses are actually a part of that mini expansion they were in this prototype already but I just added them in right away to add to the gameplay. And yeah, I think the replayability is there. It's, it's a filler game, so you might want to get that off of the shelf often just to, you know, to get started on your evening or at the end of the evening. If you only have a couple of minutes left, just play a quick game of Jungle Tribe. The game is, however, slightly language dependent. Um, most of these cards are pretty easy to remember. You don't really need to know uh, to read what's on the card because it's pretty obvious you just have to read it once from the rules and you know what they do it's it's pretty obvious i played this with my son who's eight and of course he can read but not as he can't read english so uh, when reading these cards he, he, he tries but uh, he memorized them he memorized them all of them very easily after just one play and the icons also make it pretty clear the only cards that you really need to remember are basically these cards. The shovel, what does the shovel do? Let's you search through one of the stacks in the market. The thief randomly steals a card from someone's hand and the catapult um, destroys a card. So that's basically it. The rest is pretty clear from the icons in the corner of the card itself. So while there is some language dependency, it's not a big issue. I feel that with the translated rules, anyone can play these. So in the end, I rather enjoyed this game. Uh, again, it's a very light filler game. It's uh, not too thinky, but it, if you like a quick, fast uh, card game with some take that elements, with some hand management and really funny art, then this might be for you. And then I suggest you go and check out their Kickstarter. I'll put a link in the description below, or you can also go there by clicking the I in the corner of this video. And that will take you to the Kickstarter page and you can see how you can get hold of a copy of the game and read some more about the game and maybe see what kind of stretch goals they have. And that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload a new video. Please also consider becoming a Patreon saint to my channel by clicking the link to my Patreon page in the description below or at the end of this video. And that is very much appreciated. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.